Hi guys, Victoria Paxton here. Thanks for stopping back by my YouTube channel. So before we get this started, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the little notification bell so that you get notified at any time that I put out a new video. So today, um, first of all, let me say, is everybody doing okay? Um, <clears throat> Being on lockdown during this pandemic is not easy. I get it. The one thing that, you know, we're missing is we can't see our extended family. So, okay, so Brandon Lawson. So he was in San Angelo, Texas on August 9th of 2013. He was 26 years old. He got into a fight with his girlfriend, Ladessa Lofton. She was the mother of three of his four children. He was living with her. At approximately 11.53 p.m., he left his house in San Angelo, Texas, to go to his father's house to cool off. <clears throat> his girlfriend, Ladessa, was angry with him because he had recently relapsed and he had stayed out all night, um, supposedly doing meth. So, all right, so he ran out of gas on Highway 277 near Bronte, Texas. So he called his brother, Kyle, and asked him if he could help. So about around the same time, like right after he called his brother, the 911 dispatcher received a call from a motorist reporting a truck was blocking a lane. So he had, I guess, haphazardly parked his truck to where it was kind of in the lane still. Uh, so the officer, his brother Kyle, and his girlfriend Audrey, they arrived at the scene uh, where his truck had run out of gas at the same time. So when they got to the truck, Brandon, his cell phone, and his keys were missing. Um, while he was at the scene, Kyle wasn't aware that Brandon had made a frantic call to 911. So at this point, Kyle had no idea about, about his brother calling 911. The officer that was at the scene was aware of the call, but he didn't mention it. <clears throat> he said he was it was dispatched as a motorist who had run out of gas. Um, not as a man needing help that was being chased. Yeah. So Brandon's family only discovered the call, the 911 call, after his girlfriend, Ladessa, obtained his cell phone records. <clears throat> the law enforcement never bothered to tell the family about this 911 call, which it's pretty important if your loved one's missing and they had, you know, previously to going, previous to going missing, they had dialed 911. I mean, I think that's pretty important, don't you think? <laughs> Um, so, all right, this is a long case, you guys, it's like really detailed, so this is going to be long, um, just so you know. So, Brandon calls and says he's in the middle of a field, he's going towards Abilene, Texas, uh, he says, on both sides, my truck ran out of gas, there's one car here, please hurry, he says something about no we're not talking to him, or no, I ran into them, something to that effect. 911 asked if he needed an ambulance. <clears throat> no, I need the cops, is what he said, and then the call went dead. Okay, so I found this um, timeline that someone had put together. I wanted to say, um, so I went to a Crawl Space podcast, and the length of True Crimes Twin podcast um, and got this information. So it's like truecrimesociety.com. Yeah, so I just wanted to say that ahead of time because they like put a lot of work into this. You know, this is, it's a lot. Okay, so 11.53 p.m. Brandon leaves his home in San Angelo to go to his father's house in Crowley, Texas. 12 a.m. and 12.36 a.m. Ladessa misses two calls from Brandon. 12.38 a.m., Brandon calls Kyle to tell him his truck ran out of gas. 12.40, Kyle calls Ladessa to tell her Brandon ran out of gas. 12.48, Ladessa misses another call from Brandon. 12.50 a.m., Brandon calls 911. So 12.50, Brandy, Brandon calls 911. 12.51, Kyle calls Brandon and leaves a voicemail. 12.54, Brandon calls Ladessa. There's no answer. 12.57 a.m., Brandon calls his neighbor. 12.58 a.m., Brandon calls Kyle three times, but the calls don't connect. 12.58 a.m., a, a passing motorist calls 911 to report Brandon's vehicle is blocking the highway. 1.04 a.m., the 911 dispatcher 
called Brandon. She leaves a message and attempts to call him again. 109 a.m. Brandon calls Kyle three times. The calls don't, do not connect. 1.10 a.m. Kyle and an officer arrive on scene to find Brandon missing. Kyle claims to be on the phone with Brandon at the time. 1.12 a.m. Kyle calls Brandon three times. The calls do not connect. 1.15 a.m. Brandon calls Kyle twice. The calls do not connect. 1.18 a.m. Audrey texts Brandon to tell him the police are still at his truck. 1.19 a.m. Audrey receives a phone call from Brandon. He states he is 10 minutes up the road and he's bleeding. The phone pings indicate he walked north away from his truck at 1.10 a.m. 1.19 a.m. Audrey and Kyle drive back towards San Angelo out of sight of the officer and wait 45 minutes for Brandon before returning home. Ledessa misses multiple calls from Brandon. 2 o'clock a.m. Kyle and Audrey, Audrey arrive back home. 3 o'clock a.m. Brandon's phone is either shut off or loses battery power. 8.30 a.m. Brandon's truck is towed. Okay. I know it's confusing, y'all. It, it, it's There's a lot of details in here. So at the time, Brandon had a felony uh, warrant for drug charges. Uh, a lot of people thought maybe he faked his death and started over. His family said there was no way he would never take off and leave his kids. Uh, other people theorized that he lucked upon something. He saw something concerning the police. So after this happened, Kyle took two polygraph tests and of course passed both of those with flying colors. Uh, the police suspected that Kyle had something to do with the disappearance because when Kyle and Audrey got to the truck and the police officer was there, Kyle didn't, he wasn't forthright. He didn't say, hey, my brother has a felony drug charge. You know, he's going to end up going to prison because of it. So he wasn't forthright about it. So they just automatic, oh, he's part of it. He, you know, he's the reason why his brother disappeared. Whatever. Um, yeah, they were treating, you know, they were treating Kyle bad. Like he was involved and they were just being crappy to him, basically. <clears throat> okay, so Kyle did an interview. Actually, let me give you this information. So Kyle did an interview, um, the True Crimes Twins podcast. Um, she interviewed him, I guess, when he got out of jail. Cause he, yeah, he had been in jail. Yeah, he had went to jail after his brother disappeared for a while. So when he got out of jail, they did an interview. He stated that Brandon was definitely high on meth that night. Um, and Brandon said he had that his brother had hallucinated before being on meth. Um, so apparently Brandon had said that during this phone call that Ledessa, his girlfriend, had the Mexicans run him out of town, which Kyle was like, we don't know any Mexicans. Ledessa doesn't know any Mexicans. None of that makes any sense. So um, in the past, when Brandon had hallucinated, he had never said anything about anybody being after him. Um, Ledessa definitely believed he was hallucinating. Um, okay, so apparently when Kyle took a call from Brandon and the police were showing up at his truck, he said, one time run to his brother. And Kyle took that as, there's a cop, run. And Kyle didn't run because he was trying to find his brother and the cop was there, you know, investigating the truck that ran out of gas call. So he said once he got to his brother's truck, uh, be prior to getting to his brother's truck, when he talked to his brother on the phone, it sounded like he was running and out of breath. But once he got to the truck, his brother wasn't out of breath anymore. So he was obviously just sitting still somewhere. So the next morning, Kyle and Chris, a friend of his, searched through the woods to see if they could find him, but they didn't find anything. They had no luck. They didn't find his keys. They didn't find his uh, wallet or anything. They searched the river and the underbrush because I guess it's pretty thick through there. So the night when, when Kyle showed up at his brother's truck and the police officer showed up, the police officer reached in the truck and turned the hazard lights on. He didn't check the truck or anything. He just reached in, turned the hazard lights on. So, yeah, they didn't search the truck. After everything had happened, Ledessa got the truck out of out of impound and she ultimately sold it. The police never once, like, 
search the truck to see if there was any kind of evidence or anything, which is kind of odd. Um, the other thing was, Kyle said was odd, was he didn't understand why his brother Brandon didn't turn the hazard lights on himself when he broke down and was out of gas. But he also said that the window to the truck was down. It, it was like haphazard. And I guess, you know, Brandon took care of his truck. So that was another thing his brother didn't understand. Yeah. So when he was talking, when when Brandon was talking to the on the 911 call, he was talking about someone was there, someone was after him. He never said any of that to his brother Kyle. So, you know, that's why Kyle was like, it didn't make sense. You know, he would have told his brother if somebody, you know. And he said, Kyle said he felt like Brandon was definitely in a serious situation because the last thing that he said to Kyle. So the last thing Brandon said to his brother was, where's your pride mf -er? And he said that because he wanted Kyle not to talk to the police officer, I guess, that was at his truck. But Kyle's thinking was, you know, he wasn't aware that his brother had called 911, so he didn't see the problem talking, you know, he was trying to find his brother, you know. So Kyle stated that the police, he, th you know, the family thinks that he, the police handled this, this, the whole investigation really poorly. They basically looked at him as just like, you know, some drug addict and, you know, and just kind of didn't really put any effort into it, which is really sad. It's really sad. So, okay, so the Polk County Sheriff's Office basically thinks that Brandon ran off to start a new life. That nothing happened to him. He just took off, which, you know, Kyle said, he said, you know, my brother was a was a soldier. My brother had been to prison three times. He was, he was a fighter. Like he wouldn't have given up and taken off just because of some stupid warrant. Like he would have, wouldn't have had a problem serving his time. So I don't know. Um, also all of his drug charges or I'm sorry, all of his felony charges were drug related. You know, the sad reality about that is when you're a drug addict until you get help, your whole life is centered around drugs. And it's sad that a lot of these guys end up going to prison for many, many years because of the fact that they're addicts and they need help. They need to go to detox. They need to go to rehab. But a lot of these guys either don't have people in their life that can help them or they don't know where to turn. It, it's just sad. Y'all. It, it really upsets me to see, you know, all these guys that are good guys and girls that are good girls that the only problem is they got into drugs and become an addict and then bam now they're you know sitting in prison their whole life for what they're not they're gonna come out of prison and still be an addict like you know what I mean it's just sad here's some interesting things the Kyle and the family believe that there was definitely some kind of foul play involved um so a woman in San San Angelo bought a used laptop from somebody and she found a story about a man who ran into Brandon and killed him. She contacted Brandon's dad and he turned it over to law enforcement. The girl, so, the girl also sent the paperwork she found in Bran to Brandon's cousin. The story they said didn't make sense, but the point is like the police apparently never looked into any of this, you know? So, yeah. Okay, so here we go. So don't shoot the messenger. Um, <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger. Um, I connected with Brandon. Good looking guy. Good looking young man. Um, he has like a slight accent, which was, it was endearing. Uh, he came through and was stressing immediately how he was so thankful and grateful that he was so healthy now. Um, I'm guessing, you know, he was talking about as opposed to before when he was, you know, using drugs so bad and he wasn't healthy. Yeah, he goes on to say that when he had been clean and sober before he disappeared, that he still didn't feel healthy. You know, his, you know, they talk about like, my son has been clean and sober six and a half years. And, you know, they talk about like, you can get off of drugs and alcohol, but to get your mind right and your thinking right so that you're not thinking like an addict, but thinking like a healthy person, that's a whole nother ball game, right? So, yeah. Um, he talks about his kids, his family members. Um, went on, I asked him about the day he disappeared. Um, he admitted that he had started using drugs again. 
Um, okay, so from the way he said it, it didn't sound like, based on the interview with Ledessa and with his brother Kyle, they I guess they kind of made it sound like he had relapsed the night before and that he had stayed out all night doing meth. That's why his girlfriend was pissed at him. Um, he's saying that he had started messing with drugs prior to that. So that's kind of interesting. So, yeah. Um, he said when he got home, um, he had been out and he had been using drugs and he got home and Ledessa was really upset with him. And, you know, she was talking about how, you know, you, you had changed, you were doing so well and, you know, your kids need you, I need you and look at you, you know, you're just back to the way you used to be. So he said, he said, you know, everything that she said was true and she was right, you know, he said, but he, he left, he, you know, was like in the mindset of screw it, you know, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go to my dad's house. I'm going to use more drugs. You know, I'm going to do what I want to do. He said, yeah, um, he specifically said that he became a really selfish person when he used, it was all about him and his drugs, which that's every addict, right? Um, Oh, he talked about he felt like the meth was different this time. Like maybe it was laced with something or, and he said it could have been because he had been off it for a long time and he was, you know, new to it uh, again. He said it could have been that, but he just felt like it was so much stronger or there was something in it on top of it because it really hit him hard. So, um... Yeah, he talks about he was definitely really paranoid. Um, he had thought he was being chased uh, by Mexicans. He said he knows now that wasn't true. Um, that was just what was in his head. Yeah, he said he called 911 to report that he was being chased and he was upset with his brother Kyle because he didn't heed his warning to turn around and run from the police. And I said, you know, do you understand that that's like, contradicting yourself <laughs> you know you called saying you're being chased but then you tell your brother not to go to the police and he said I, I know I can see it now you know <laughs> so yeah um okay so he went on to say that he just got to a point he had been up for so long and the drugs that he just he just needed peace so he said he laid down um, yeah, he laid down and he doesn't remember anything after that. So I said to him, um, did you die as a result of the elements or an animal? You know what? And he said, no, I think... He said he thought it was because he had done more drugs and maybe he overdosed somehow. Um, he said, you know, he felt it was the drugs that did it. Um, so yeah, somewhere in that thick brush out there is where you'll find his bones, I guess. Um, and I know, I feel bad, you know, I know that, um, the family really thinks there was foul play involved. Um, but there was foul play involved. It's called drugs, you know? And the anger should be directed at the addiction, you know? <clears throat> the anger should be directed at this world where, you know, we, you know, oh, you're a drug addict, you're nothing. Or, oh, you're a drug addict, we're, you broke the law, so we're gonna put you in prison for the next 10 years. And then in 10 years, when you get out of prison, guess what? You're still going to be a drug addict and you're going to probably break the law again because you don't have anybody there to support you and help you. You know, so I feel like, you know, I really feel like the anger should be directed towards drugs. I feel like, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, the pain that these people are going through because their loved one died. I mean, it's horrible like I can't imagine but I just think their anger is misdirected 
but who am I? Like, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to judge them in any way, shape, or form. My God, I mean, they lost their son, their brother, you know, their friend, their boyfriend, their father. Like, it's horrible. Yeah. Okay, guys, so be nice, be kind to people, stay safe, um, hang in there with this pandemic stuff. I think today is like day 32 or something. I, I don't know. So anyway, take care of yourselves. All right. Bye.